seconds and counting. All systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 with Turksat 5B. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. for second stage ignition that's coming up in just about 34 seconds from now first stage is coming up on 4g's acceleration and we're going to begin throttling down to hold 4g's getting ready for main engine cutoff Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. We've got successful stage separation. The second stage now under power of the single Merlin vacuum engine. We'll be coming up on fairing deploy in a little under 30 seconds. Views of the titanium grid fins beginning to deploy on the left. As we see the lights of Florida in the background, as we head east, due east, from the Cape into our transfer orbit, parking orbit. We're getting ready for the camera on second stage to switch forward to look at the spacecraft and the payload fairing for fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you see the two fairing halves have separated. Falling away from the vehicle, we're now exposing the Turksat 5B satellite to outer space. As a reminder, we will be attempting to retrieve these two fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, as mentioned previously, these two fairing halves supported the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission in June of this year. But right now, we're at T-plus, four minutes and counting. Everything continues to go well for the Falcon 9 mission carrying Turksat 5B into the parking orbit. As John mentioned, it's T plus four minutes, now 20 seconds into today's mission. We're currently in the first of two planned MBAC burns for satellite deployment. At T plus six minutes and 27 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage is entry burn, which a burn that lasts 24 seconds. For the entry burn, we relight the center engine E9, and then partway through, we relight E1 and E5 engines. So we have a total of three M1D engines helping to slow down the vehicle as it passes through the Earth's atmosphere. 
Uh, you'll see this exhaust start as a circular plume at the bottom from the single engine, then shape into a longer, narrower plume when the two other two engines ignite. Reusability is a key to lowering the cost of space flight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9, that first stage that is supporting today's mission, will perform this entry burn for the third time, having previously supported both the CRS-22 resupply flight to the ISS and the Crew-3 launch just last month. Great view on the right-hand side of the MBAC nozzle. Um, the Merlins on the first stage are, with their short nozzles, are optimized for sea level. These achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent, while the MVAC engine with its extended nozzle is optimized for 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now we're about 45 seconds away from the entry burn on the first stage. If you're just joining us, we had a successful launch from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, and we're currently watching the second stage on the right-hand side of your screen enter orbit with the left-hand left side of your screen. The first stage is heading back to our drone ship in the Atlantic, a shortfall of Gravitas. Let's watch out for that landing, that entry burn begin in just a moment. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry startup. Really bright from that entry burn start. Shutdown. And there it looks like we've had a successful entry burn shutdown. Um, if you noticed on the launch pad, the, the Falcon 9, um, not when the Falcon 9 makes its way back to Earth, you may notice some different soot markings on the outer side, or the outer edges of the rocket. If you ever wondered how those soot markings are formed, it's because the soot is generated when the carbon-based rocket-grade kerosene RP-1 burns. Since re-entry occurs engines first, the booster flies through its own plume, which deposits the soot on the rocket, and you can see some of those sparks and soot flying up at the camera there on the left-hand side. Terminal guidance. Again, as a quick recap, we had a successful liftoff at 10.58 p.m. from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. A successful separation of the first and second stages. Uh, the first stage, stage is on its way back to our drone ship, a, a, a shortfall of Gravitas in the Atlantic stage Ocean. Stage 2, FTS is saved. And the second stage is heading to its initial orbital insertion with the TurkSat 5B satellite. We're coming up on a couple events, Seco 1 and Landing Burn. And back engine cutoff. Stage one landing burn. Had a successful second engine cutoff, and nominal orbit the landing session. burn has just started. And we just heard good orbit. Confirmed a nominal orbital insertion. We're now Stage waiting on our Falcon landing to control. land on drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. have it. That's SpaceX's 99th successful booster landing, as well as SpaceX's 78th mission flying a refill and booster.